I started to realize something. Um, man, we play this game on Sundays, and it's really the Lord's Day. And when the day we should be worshiping the Lord, a lot of times players are getting worshiped, and we get to go on this ball field. So since so many of us didn't get to go to church today, I have a word that I want to share. I know this is a little untraditional, so like I said, buckle up. Uh, Revelations 3.20 says, See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and eat with him and he with me. I want to tell y'all about a knock that I heard this week. A lot of people don't know this, but on Friday, my daughter, she's four years old, she had her third uh, epilepsy seizure attack. And it's been almost two years. She was uh, about a month away. If she would have had no seizures for one more month, then she would have been off the medicine. But now we have to start that clock all the way over. It was on Friday when we was a bunch of kids were over at the house and she was playing and I noticed something was off. Um, and I told her mom I thought she was having a seizure. Her mom was pretty good. She, she saw it, my wife. And we took her in her room, didn't want to cause a scene. And she started to foam at the mouth. And uh, it was worse, her worst seizure. For 30 minutes, um, she seized. Um, she wouldn't come and we had to call the uh, paramedics. They came. And so over the course of time, it ended up being a total of 30 minutes. They got her in. My wife got in the paramedics with her. I got behind them driving. Um, you can imagine all the thoughts that's racing through your mind. The last sight you see of your daughter is she's totally out of it. Um, got to the hospital and my wife told me that my daughter stopped breathing in the car twice. Um, so I'm, of course, praying. We get to the hospital. They put, give a bunch of medicine. They should seize the stop. She's laying there. And at this point, if she sees for 30 minutes, you, 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 you start to fear there could be development issues that could mess with her brain. Um, you know, she stopped breathing. If there was no oxygen going to her brain, you know, you're starting to think about her speech be slurred or anything um, or worse. So we prayed and we prayed and she had medicine and, and my wife and I had to stay overnight at the hospital. And in the middle of the night, probably about three o'clock, I heard a knock. And the knock, the knock was my daughter. I prayed for her. I said, God, let this just be an attack from the enemy. It's just trying to be a distraction and let him have overplayed his hand and my daughter come back stronger than before. When I heard my daughter talk in the middle of the night, and my daughter, she doesn't have any develop, development issues, praise God. She doesn't have any slurred speech, you know, prior to this. She woke up talking clearer than she was talking before. Now, anyone who deal with epilepsy knows that it takes a little few days for them to come back. You know, they usually can get back to normal wherever they were, um, but it takes a couple of days. They're groggy, it's a lot because what their body is like, it's like the TV just static in their brain. She was talking clearer than before. And it was three o'clock and we heard her talk and we let her talk for about 20 minutes and we said, hey baby, it's, it's, it's nighttime, let's go back to sleep. You know, and I just prayed. I started saying, praise God, praise God. The next morning when she got up, my daughter was so sharp she was able to talk to her, me and her mom. I mean, clear conversation. She's sharp for a four-year-old. No stuttering. All her words clear. And my daughter, like I said, my daughter is already sharp. She was sharper than before. And if any of, if any of you were able to have a conversation with my daughter, you wouldn't know anything had ever happened. So we had a birthday party for my seven-year-old daughter that day. She got to be released from the hospital, and she came back home. And it was as if nothing was happening. She was playing with the kids the day before. And she had the worst seizure that she had ever had. And the next day, she's back out there playing with the kids. Now, of course, we can't let her get overstimulated. We have to keep bringing her in, we have to keep cooling her down, can't let her do too much just because of protocol. But when I tell you uh, I, I got a chance to see, hear a knock from God, and what I want to share is we get to play this game, and it's great. And there's so many amazing things that happen in that game, and everybody wants to hear about them. But when we lead this game, we go back to being regular people. And regular people are living life. And people are waiting for a knock. And the word says who Jesus is. He's knocking at the door. All you got to do is get up. And so on the way, man, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm praying. And I'm trusting. And I'm believing. And I'm asking for my daughter to make it through. I'm asking that she's better than before. And God gave me just what I asked for plus some. I was blown away. And at that point, I knew, well, I, the game is already, it's, the game is going to take care of itself. My, my knock had already been, been answered. And I just want people to know, like, if you got stuff going on in your life, lay it before the Lord. Lay it before the Lord and trust. And be expecting of a knock. 
Because the word says what you have to do is you have to get up and open the door. He's not going to open the door for you. He's going to knock. But you have to be listening and waiting for the knock.